Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. I'm really happy to ex- to welcome today's guest, Stephen Caps, and he's going to talk to us all about entrepreneurship, building a business. He's got a fantastic story, and I'm happy to have him on the show. So, Stephen, welcome. Well, hey, thank you so much for having me. I am super excited to be here. Yeah, kind of tell people about your story and how you got started, and and we'll we'll uh, we'll get right into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I have always been entrepreneurial. I mean, um, ever since I was a little kid, I would like draw uh, pictures for my friends at school and I sell them for a dollar. And if they wanted them uh, colored in, it was two dollars. So, so I've always been entrepreneurial, and so. I, I get married in 2001 to my wife, uh, Lisa, and then her uh, dad was in the steel business. And so, so he's been in the steel business uh, forever. So we went and worked uh, for him in his business for about a year or so. And then whenever uh, um, he and my mother-in-law moved out of town, they ended up uh, giving us uh, the company. That's a short of sort of the short version of short version of that but you know folks hear that and they're like oh man that's awesome you know it must be nice and well what it amounted to was we got a forklift a welding machine and a business that didn't make any money i was like oh hey uh, thanks dad that's awesome but um uh we worked super hard and i had you know a dozen harebrained ideas and finally, I landed on one that worked. And so we're a fabrication shop. And so I was like, well, I heard that, you know, people like uh, gates, you know, and they're uh, pretty expensive. So, you know, why don't we make a driveway gates? So it was just another hair, uh, hair-brained idea, but we built a gate and we had put it outside of our uh, a shop there and we had to sign, you know, custom gates. And like they say, you know, with the rest is history, but that was like one of my first ideas in this business that actually got some attraction. And, you know, being an entrepreneur, you know, I am sure that uh, folks, you know, listening, you know, we all have that moment where like, we're like this crazy idea is actually going to work. And uh, that was our moment. And then I say that, uh, you know, we made it because we started um, paying ourselves. But it was about that same time that my wife, Lisa, was a diagnosed with um, stage three ovarian cancer. And so it's like, you know, you are working super hard, uh, pouring your life into something, and then, man, you're just, you know, punched in the gut. Mm-hmm. And that's where uh, we were at. But, I mean, we just faced that like we had did everything else, you know, because... If you want to be an entrepreneur, you know, by raising your hand and, and, you know, saying, Hey, I want to be an entrepreneur. What you are really saying is I want to do something that is super hard, maybe, maybe even impossible. And so we faced uh, the cancer, a diagnosis, like we did everything else. Well, we're just going to roll up our sleeves, uh, trust God, and we're going to beat this thing. Hmm. And I would like to say that, you know, we did and, you know, life was, you know, fantastic. But what uh, happened was uh, 15 months later, one week uh, before Christmas, Elisa uh, passes away. And so she ran the books and the office and then I ran the shop. And I didn't, you know, I didn't know anything about what she did. You know, I knew enough to get myself in trouble uh, mm-hmm. for sure. So this part of my life is what I call the crash and burn because i lose my wife to cancer Mm -hmm. then we had one large uh, customer that was basically keeping the doors open we 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 had to repeat a customer that would order a size a a sizable order about once a quarter well we ended up losing them as a customer and so you know we are like crashing and burning like fast um because we had no health insurance no life insurance no savings, just a pile of debt. Mm-hmm. And um, through this season, it was like the absolute best advice that I got from someone was, 
which it wasn't a good advice, but you know, it was like, you just need one big loan to, you know, pay off all of your other loans. And so it was not a good time. It was hard. It was a difficult, not for sure a lot to do, but I um, end up getting remarried and then things weren't as bad as they, well, I didn't know how bad things were until like after we got married. And then it's like, oh, here's a vendor bill. That's, a, you know, um, a $10,000. And I didn't know that we owe that. And you know, here's another bill. And, oh, I didn't know that you have to pay a payroll taxes. And so we were in, I mean, an absolute mess. And it is like the um, advice that is out there. There were just so much just you know, most people have no idea what they're doing with finances. They're just hoping for the best. And, you know, if I make a dumb decision with money, well, I'll just, you know, try to make a more of it. And, you know, especially in business. So a friend of ours had uh, told us about this little uh, financial class that this a church was doing across town. And I was like, well, you know, we'll, you know, check it out. You know, I was so uh, delusional the plane is crashing and burning and i'm like oh it's not that bad so we uh, go to this class and then it ended up uh, being a dave ramsey is a financial piece you know, you know which is like the nuts and bolts of you know a personal finance and i had never heard any of this stuff you know i was in my mid-30s and i had never even had a thousand dollars set aside for an emergency you know, I was like, well, spend it while you got it. And if you don't got it, you know, borrow it. And if you don't, you know, if you're not able to borrow it, you know, put it on this card and this card and this card. And so just really out of control, just a very typical, you know, 30 something, I'm sure. So we started, you know, doing the steps. And in two and a half years, we have paid off $235,000 in debt. And so we were completely debt free except our house. Yeah, very, uh, very inspiring stories. So then the next question is, um, so resilience kind of dissecting into five different categories, resilience in the face of adversity, um, your journey includes overcoming significant personal professional challenges, um, including the loss of your first wife and major customer. And could you share specific strategies, mindsets that helped you navigate through these tough times and build a successful debt-free business? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, the very first thing is that you have to get actionable information. Man, there is so much noise out there. And, you know, it is like, you know, everybody is an expert. Everybody is a guru. And they actually haven't even done anything. But, but, but you have to get actionable information that you can, you know, all right, this is my first step and my next step. And uh, for us at that time, you know, that was a uh, Dave Ramsey's um, a financial piece because he has the seven, you know, uh, baby steps. So finding that information that you're able to act on because the power is in the doing. So just being able to, you know, you know, it may be one little tiny thing, I have all of these problems. I don't know what to do. Well, every great journey starts with one very non-glamorous first step. I, I have a buddy, Terry Pike. He lost over a, a 90 pounds over like a 12-month uh, period. And I asked him, Terry, man, what? You know, how in the world did you uh, do that? And then, and then I'm expecting to hear, well, you know, I hired an expensive a trainer or I got, you know, a gastric bypass or, you know, you know, I did something big. The exact things that he said was I started a food journal. I started moving more. I got seven to nine hours worth of, worth of, worth of sleep every night. Mm -hmm. So all of these basic, boring steps but at the finish line it is like oh my goodness that is amazing and my wife and i have ran a, oh, several half uh, marathons and it is like at the finish line 
you know, people are like, wow, man, that's awesome. How did you do that? And well, I ran down the road at five o'clock in the morning whenever nobody cared. <laughs> I, you know, ran on the treadmill and I did, you know, you know, sprints three times a week or, you know, whatever. It is all of these boring, un, you know, unglamorous things that we do. So I say, fill your life with activities that nobody sees and that will produce results that everybody sees. I love that. And it kind of reminds me of this, um, this idea of um, where um, it's basically you get rewarded in public for what you do in private, which is yes. what you're describing. Yes. Um, and, you know, you look at like some of the, you, I love watching professional sports, not, but just kind of like seeing that resilience in adversity. And basically, you know, you see that, that, that guy that or girl or guy that shoots the winning shot, you know, that, that was not a one-time thing. They probably right, did right. 10,000 times, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That was no accident. That was no accident. I think that um, human nature is that we see someone who is, you know, successful. We uh, see someone making at the winning shot and we're like, oh, wasn't that lucky? Lucky, I think that Michael Jordan was like, you know, he he shot like something like 2,000 free throws a day or, you know, you know, you know, you know, something like that, something, something ridiculous, you know, putting in all of this time and nobody is seeing that. Yeah. You know, like uh, the Beatles in, um, Malcolm uh, Gladwell's book, um, Outliers, I think it's Outliers, where uh, he talks about the 10,000 hour rule that, you know, putting in 10,000 hours is what it takes to become an expert in your uh, field. And the Beatles were playing like these night, these nightclubs from like, I don't know, like 11 o'clock at night to like, you know, four in the morning, like every single night. Mm -hmm. And nobody knew them. <laughs> no, no one knew who they were. And then all of a sudden, one day they're an overnight a success. But yeah. it is nose to the grindstone every day, every day. And and I love what uh, Denzel Washington says is that, man, you just got to keep chopping wood. And then I think one of the keys to my uh, success, I think, is that I wasn't smart enough to quit. Because whenever we start something in the beginning, it is all like, oh, man, this is awesome. Here we go, man. We're going to take this mountain. We're going to start this business. I'm going to lose all this weight. Woohoo! Well, uh, that's all good. But that is not what causes people to win over time. It is those unglamorous every day, chopping wood, chopping wood. No one sees what you're doing. Then over time, because those small actions isn't just one action. It is actions over time stacked on top of each other make a huge impact. Uh, so kind of moving on, this uh, idea of uh, resilience in the face of adversity. Um, one thing is talking about, basically, you mentioned the role of faith in your entrepreneurial journey. Yes. And, and uh, again, we're not uh, we're not advocating any uh, religion, but, um, I'm a spiritual person mm -hmm. self, but elaborate on how your faith influenced your business decisions and helped you during your most challenging periods of your life and career. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, personally I'm a Christian and that is, you know, the faith that I live. But for me, I believe that God has created us. God has created us all to fulfill and and to do a great things. He plans the end from the beginning. All right. But for me to get over here to this amazing ending, this amazing, wow, he made the shot. Well, I have to back up over here and I have to go through all of these hardships, difficulties, um, setbacks, all of these things that are not fun. They are not fun because through suffering, through suffering comes strength. So if we're able to endure the suffering, endure the hardship, endure 
the no's endure the things that don't work out and we make these huge plans and we're going to do this and that and it never works out how you think that it will but staying the course staying the course is what will get you to that end result and for me i believe that i have a lot of important things to do in this life and one part of accomplishing that is not being weighted down by debt not being weighted down by you know i have all of these masters that i'm a slave to and you know um we have a seven figure uh, business and we have a zero debt we don't have any lines of credit we don't have a credit card because you know i believe that if i am supposed to accomplish this great thing i believe that god will help me do that without having all these all these different masters yeah and then the other thing is um talking about is basically you know you talk about uh um advice for struggling entrepreneurs and yes. you know for our listeners who might be facing tough times in their business right now what practical advice would you give them based on your own experiences and the lessons you learned throughout your entrepreneurial journey yes well 2023 for us has been a challenge because um most of the business that we do is more a luxury and so whenever you know people are going to cut back well i will wait on that you know a project till next year next spring or whatever so in that it's like okay what are we able to do to where we're not so sus not so susceptible to a down down economy you know because even a turkey can uh, fly in a, a tornado i like that <laughs> so whenever you have um challenging times rather than looking outward and blaming everybody else all right how can we not be so vulnerable to these down times now if someone is struggling a couple of things one do you know what problem you are solving for your for your customer because if you don't then that's a big problem and then two what does your customer care about if we can put our finger on that that is gold but um being able to a uh, surround yourself with other like-minded individuals because the being being an entrepreneur is such a lonely road <laughs> such a lonely road and you uh, think that you're the only one that's you know ever struggled and you're the only one that's ever missed it you know on you know, quoting a job or 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 a pricing a product and no everyone has done that and will uh, do that and i think that we all face the same types of challenges no matter what level you're at you know whether you're just starting or you know you have a, you have been in business for a 20 years i think that we all have the exact same struggles yeah yeah really fascinating um and then kind of um to end it out on a high note yeah um, you advocate for the idea of not using life as an excuse and transforming yes. years into successes. Um, can you provide an example from your own life or coaching experience where a significant setback was turned into a stepping stone for success? Yes, because there's probably nothing more that I hate than I hate than um, excuses. So you know, I say you have to have a mindset of intense acceptance you know no matter what happens and then i will uh, take it a, take it a, take it a step further don't use your life as an excuse mm -hmm. whenever elisa was sick i prayed with great tears you know god don't let me go crazy why well one I, one i didn't want to go crazy and then two i knew if i did people would understand oh yeah Ever since his wife died, he hasn't been the same. And we all know someone that ever since the divorce, ever since the accident, ever since, you know, the bankruptcy, ever since Steve's wife died, he hasn't been the same. 
because I have a dozen reasons why I should be a why I should be a mental case. You know, uh, first off, I was the second youngest of five um, children. I I had a pronounced stutter. We moved all the time, so I'm always the new kid. In fact, but I graduated high school, we had moved more than uh, 20 times. I leave home at 19, drop out of college. I start to get some traction in my mid 20s, but by the time I'm 33, I'm a widower. And then to top it all off, I'm a PK, a preacher's kid. I mean, that in itself is enough to put anyone into therapy. But I say <laughs> that these hardships and the difficulties gave me the strength to persevere in business. It is like whenever we go to the gym, what do we do? We lift heavy weights that breaks down the muscles and then the muscles build again and then you're stronger. The exact same way in our life. I have to go through this in order to get to that great thing that God has for me in my life. Yeah, such a uh, inspiring story, and um, you know you've uh, a lot of courage. If people want to check out, check you out, you know, reach out to you, yes. follow your work. How can they do so? Um, I'm on all uh, social uh, social uh, platforms. Um, Stephen Caps. Um, um, you can go to my website, StephenCaps.com, and um, I have a uh, online a uh, coaching program that's uh, geared towards blue collar workers it, it is called the blue collar business academy you, you can go over to elite.stephencaps.com or uh, check out my podcast pull up and thrive yeah and for all the audience out there let's thank steve for coming on um sharing his story um authenticity you're very raw powerful um all of his resources will be in the links and show notes be sure to check those out and uh thanks so much for a wonderful podcast recording Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for uh, uh, having me on. I really appreciate it.